All right, so I just finished listening to the quarter one 2020 earnings call from Tesla, and we got a lot of good news. We got a lot of okay news and some interesting stuff that they confirmed at this call, so I thought I would go over just the bullet point stuff that in case you didn't re listen to the call because there were some cringy parts that you probably don't want to listen to the whole thing for, but either way, I wrote down some of the most interesting parts about it. The main thing that we should take away from this is quarter one of 2020 was profitable. Just barely, you know, it wasn't a huge amount of profits, but it was technically a profit. So they didn't lose money in Q1, which, by the way, that's never happened to them before. They've always lost money in quarter one because it's a very seasonably weak area of the year. And normally Q3 and Q4 is when they showcase their best numbers. But knowing that 2020 started with a profitable quarter means only good things to come. Unless, of course, we talk about Q2, which is very much up in the air right now. But the bulk of the shutdowns going on because of the pandemic are likely to impact the results in quarter two. And there's just so much we don't know about that yet. So anyway. Anyway, the good news is that the Model Y production ramp has gone very, very well. In fact, in the first quarter of production, they were able to produce more Model Ys than they initially produced in the first two quarters of Model 3 production. So to give you guys a little bit of a comparison of how fast they're able to produce these vehicles compared to before, they're accelerating at over twice the rate that the Model 3 originally did, which is great news for Model Y reservation holders. They also got lots of questions about feature complete full self-driving, which they've now updated on their website because they rolled out the software update that allows vehicles to read and register road signs so they stop at stoplights and stop signs and then they just require a little bit of confirmation from the driver to go if it's a green light and that in return helps train the neural net which will eventually get to the point where you don't have to intervene at all and they talked about on the conference call that the next big step for full self-driving is going to be turning on city streets and they feel confident that they're going to have that feature ready by the end of this year so probably expect it early 2021 at that point but hey if they get turning down on city streets, you've got almost everything there. You've got turning on ramps, you've got stop signs, stop lights, turning at intersections. Once you add in reverse summon, feature complete full self-driving is basically there. And Elon alluded to that on the call, that the cars are capable for much more than what they're doing right now. We're just trying to be safe and responsible about it. So yeah, by the end of this year, turning should be a thing. They also detailed some of the Model Y casting differences about how much cheaper it is to build a Model Y than a Model 3 because of the simplicity and manufacturing. That results in the vehicle weighing much less than it should compared to a Model 3 and allowing it to have range that far exceeded expectations with things like the heat pump and also make the manufacturing of the Model Y very, very low so that there's high profit margin. And they also brought that up in today's earnings that the Model Y is profitable in the first quarter unlike the Model 3 was. They also brought up an interesting point that demand didn't seem to change that much because of the removal of the federal tax credits you got when buying a Tesla in 2019. This is the first quarter, they've detailed that now, hey, no one really gets that many federal tax credits when buying a Tesla anymore because they've kind of used all that up, but there are still lots of people ordering their vehicles. And to this day, there are people still ordering that have yet to experience the vehicle themselves. So Tesla's kind of ahead of the game in that way because they've simplified the online ordering process as well as the touchless delivery process, which makes a whole lot of sense right now. So they're not worried that people aren't getting those federal tax credits in the US anymore because demand appears to still be there and very present. They also finally gave us some answers on the subscription option for full self-driving, which you guys know I've done a lot of videos on, and they didn't really go into the details of if this is going to be pay-per-use full self-driving, like is it just making full self-driving a loan that you pay off and eventually own outright, or is this just something you subscribe to and then you get access to the features until you stop subscribing to it? All we know is that they claimed on the call that this subscription option would probably be available by the end of the year, and that financially, it would still be better to buy it outright than it would be to subscribe to it. So if you think you're going to save some money or something by subscribing to it, it's not really going to work that way. Financially, it'll still make a lot more sense to buy the feature outright. And they didn't talk about the price increase, but just a reminder, Elon has said that full self-driving is probably going to get a grand more expensive on July 1st. So look out for that if you're considering buying it. And thankfully, someone did ask about the new rules in China, which make the Model 3 not qualified for the government tax credits there and someone asked if Tesla would be lowering the price of the standard range Model 3 to reach that threshold so that people buying Teslas in China could still qualify for those EV credits. And they announced on this call they are. In about a day after tomorrow, the price will drop so that people can continue taking advantage of that credit in China. And because the operating expenses and the manufacturing costs of building a Model 3 in China are so low, they're probably still going to make a profit off of that. Finally, got some more news on Battery Investor Day because I know a ton of us are wondering about that 
that and there's so many questions that had to be followed up with. We'll talk about that more on Battery Investor Day. Just talk about it now! It's supposed to be happening by now. But they did say third week of May they hope to be doing Battery Investor Day it's somewhere either in California or Texas. They don't have a firm date on it yet. I'm sure they will let us know when they do, but it's good to know that they're still targeting next month and I cannot wait to hear what they have to announce at that event. And May is like a couple days away, guys. So hopefully we can finally get some answers for Battery Investor Day. And other good news is that at Battery Investor Day, they're more than likely going to announce the location of the next Tesla Gigafactory, which we've heard so much about. They're looking for a new location to build a factory and produce the Cybertruck, but it'll also be producing Model Ys for the East Coast to minimize transport costs, given all the Model Ys are being built in the Bay Area right now. So transporting those all across the country, it's not that cost effective, but more than likely everything is pointing towards it being in Texas, you know, Elon praising them on Twitter and saying that there could be a Battery Investor Day in Texas and it spends a lot of time there due to SpaceX anyway. So it's a very safe assumption that once it becomes announced, it will be in Texas. And I'm sure they want to get that factory up and running as soon as possible. Hopefully production is still on course for 2021. If we're very, very lucky, we would get the first deliveries by the end of next year. But given the pandemic and everything being delayed, probably not. I think it's safe to assume Cybertruck deliveries are going to happen in 2022. But knowing that the location of the factory is going to be announced soon is good. We need more info on this. Then, of course, they gave some details on the solar roof installations, which they said in New York they were able to reach 1,000 solar roofs produced a week. And by the end of this year, they're hoping to be installing 1,000 solar roofs per week. So production for that is all ready. They got the cost down. They got the ramping of production down. They just are waiting for things to open back up and for these stay-at-home orders to be lifted so that they can actually roll them out. They're saying they have no demand problem. Plenty of people are ordering it. It's just an installation problem because of the crisis we're facing right now. But good news for Solar Roof. And they even dropped some details that they want to be getting into the HVAC business with hospital room quality air filters that prevent bacteria and viruses from getting in the house and running in a very cost-effective manner. And it wasn't just Elon talking about it. So that means that Tesla is definitely considering this in the future. If you were curious about the next big product they wanted to revolutionize in the future, sounds like HVAC system is likely in that pipeline. Anyway, those are the main things you can take away from the call. There were a lot of questions at the end that were intentionally vague and unnecessary. And there was a lot of filler, a lot of technical difficulties. Some of the first questions that came up were pretty good, but it just got worse and worse and worse. So, but like I said at the beginning of this video, quarter two is likely when we should expect some of the shutdowns to actually start impacting their cash flow a lot. Quarter one, only one week of that was closed. So that's why things seem like they're going really well and numbers look really good. But Tesla's selling a lot of EV credits to other companies, which will be a huge source of revenue during the quarter two period, as well as Giga Shanghai ramping production. And they're hoping to be at near 200,000 vehicles produced by that location by the middle of this year, which means that Giga Shanghai is ramping really, really quickly. So they're still going to get a lot of revenue from that. The Model Y factory is still being built really quickly at Giga Shanghai. They also detailed that Giga Berlin is still on track to open in 2021 and start producing Model Ys. The bad news, of course, that you guys probably heard the Tesla Semi has been delayed until 2021, which kills me as a reservation holder. I own five Tesla Semis and I cannot wait to drive that thing around the Nürburgring myself. I'm just kidding. I don't order any Semis, but obviously because that vehicle requires so many batteries and because so much of production is limited right now, the Tesla Semi is not going to be coming out this year, which really bums me out. So yeah, the pandemic is delaying everything, but there are some good things in the short term to look forward to. And if there were more questions you guys had and things you wanted to hear more about, feel free to hit me up over on Twitter, join my Discord and we can chat more about it there. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.